Good morning. Um, today I'm working on hip rafters. They are the transition point between uh, this pitch going forward and this pitch going to the side. Um, and so they have to make both of those meet. What I do is I draw this out um, in AutoCAD and it helps me figure out uh, a lot of things but not everything. What I've done in AutoCAD is I've um, been able to look at this, the shape of this structure in three views. So a plan view, a front view, and a side view. And so with those three views, I'm able to know what the finished shape of uh, this thing is gonna be. That this part of the roof will actually meet with this part of the roof and at the end of those rafters, that it'll actually be um, a level plane. So that's kind of the challenging thing um, when making two planes meet in space. You just gotta know that they're all gonna end in this, uh, at the same point. So I know that much about this structure, that that is able to happen. What I don't know is exactly how to cut the joinery uh, for that hip rafter to make it um, land coplanar with the other rafters. So what I'm doing is uh, called scribing. Um, I don't know that this is exactly the right way to do it, that other timber framers would do it this way, but this is what makes sense in my brain to be able to um, get it done and get this thing to, to drop into place. So with the other rafters, I know exactly uh, how far away the wall is from the, from the beam that the rafters are going to land on. I can look pretty solidly at that triangle and figure out what needs to be cut at either end of the rafter to make it land. In this case, it's just a little more complicated and it makes more sense to me to throw it up there and figure it out. So this is actually put up there for the second time. The first time that I put it up, I was just figuring out the compound angle that, uh, that the rafter meets the house with. So I really just put it up there, have it blocked up in place where I think it goes, and then I measure a given distance off of the surfaces that it's meeting. So I did that for the compound angle at the top. Now I need to figure out the notches that make this thing actually meet the post and meet my ledger up there. I've done a little bit of work to uh, get this thing set up to where it's parallel with the other rafters. Um, I can sight down it and see that the the slopes are the same. However, this new one is sitting an inch and a half higher than the rest of them. So if I want that to come in coplanar with those other ones, I know that everywhere that it uh, is going to intersect the, the two items that it's going to sit on, the post and the ledger, I have to measure up an inch and a half from those surfaces, and that's where I make my cuts in order to get that thing to drop down and have some purchase on those two points and be coplanar with the rest of the roof. So I'm just checking uh, that it is in fact parallel to these other ones. I run my level across and make a mark where it hits that. Do the same thing up here and they are the same measurement. They're both an inch and a half. I know that this thing has to drop an inch and a half right in the spot where it sits. That line is an inch and a half above the ledger. And then this line, I put the torpedo level on it, and that line is level. So those are things that I know. That marks the, this marks the edge of the ledger and the vertical cut. It's an inch and a half up, and this is level. Did the same thing on the other side, 
between this and its corresponding mark on the other side. I'll connect the dots and then also connect the dots between this and its corresponding mark on the other side and then remove all of that material. So these sticks I put up in order to keep it upright, but what it's also marking is the vertical intersection here. So if I just trace this there, and pretty hard to do on this one, but right there, those are those vertical cuts where, where it intersects here. And um, it, it's also, I've checked to make sure these are plumb, straight up and down, and that keeps the rafter plumb while I climb around and, and mark it and, um, and do all of that. So this point's pretty easy to conceive of, right? It hits the corner of the post right there. And while marking that gets a little goofy, I know that if I mark this point here, it intersects with this here. So I can just connect the dots there and make that a straight line. Um, I've marked center line here. This is part of my setup beforehand. I've marked center line of the rafter. I know where this rafter wants to travel on center. It wants to come right off of the corner of the post and I have a mark up at the wall that uh, I'm looking for center line. Uh, so that's those. And then I'm marking that in same inch and a half. So that whole line is an inch and a half off of the surface where it's going to land. So that goes from there, straight down, that cut there, back up just a little bit right there, and then I guess I need to know Where inch and a half dies into this. So I measured inch and a half deep uh, along the length of this cut, but then I also need to know where inch and a half, that inch and a half height, which is right about there, where it exits the the rafter. So I get my get my ruler down in there. That's inch and a half right there, so that I know that when I'm making that the the entry to that notch that's where it's going to transition from this surface to a level surface. funny little marks into something that works. So I know that this is the this is the corner of that post where it crossed the center line. I know that that's supposed to roughly be square. So I'm using the corner of my square right on there and it does hit that point where I showed it exiting before. It's on the outside of the, the building. This is the front side of the building. That's the, that's the side. And then I know between there and there is both level and square to each other. All right, it roughly looks like, yeah, it's square to the end of that. So this was that, that exit point. That that's that exit point. And so from there to the exit point here, that is a line that's useful 
everything this way of the line is untouched. That's where the transition starts down into there. I'm just going to make that a little darker, make it reconcile a little bit. So all of this comes out. One thing that I do know about this, and this is the only bit that I have to measure as I do it, if this is sitting at the corner of the post and that's landing hard right there, there's no air between in my setup between the corner of the post and, and this surface. And I want to drop an inch and a half, then I know that this point right here wants to be an inch and a half deep. So as I'm doing this, I have a depth gauge here. I know go to the line, but in that point, that's sort of a mystery point. So I know that I need to be an inch and a half deep right there. And then as I'm doing it, I just want to make sure that I'm creating a, a flat plane. One way to do that is to sort of pivot your a straight edge across it or to just lay the, the framing square in it. And if that, you know, sits flat, then you know you have a flat surface. This other one may not be as camera friendly. It wasn't as weird on my first one. Maybe I should have filmed my first one. Um, <laughs> this rafter has a little bit of a twist in it, so it's not, um, it's not sitting really nice and pretty um, or consistently at this end. But the cool thing about scribing is, is I can account for that. I can create a surface for it to land on so it doesn't have to land on a corner and not distribute the load real well. It's just a little bit funky to get laid out. But I know this is a exit point and this is an exit point. So I can connect the dots there. And then I'm making this shape here and this little shape here. So what should have happened is this should have gone deeper and just about cornered out here, or at least been deeper than what it is so that this would be essentially a parallel line to that. But this rafter is twisted, which way? It's twisted that way. So it's not at all. Um, so what we have to do is sort of extrapolate from the things that we know what that face is so that we cut this surface right. And that is a little difficult. So it should be that angle there. The same over here, which it more or less is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this line for better reference. And I'm going to use that line to create a point in space that doesn't really exist. And then I know, boy, I wish I had more hands than I do. So if I'm running on that surface there, that is how deep that wants to go. So we have a little bit of airspace. There, there's that much of it is not going to be touching. But all of this will be. I just have to be okay with that. If I really was worried about it, I could shim up underneath that as well. Um, Did somebody just laid an egg. That better be an awesome egg. I don't really like to wear gloves when I'm doing this kind of work, but it's so cold out here that my tools are all pretty cold. And uh, so I just have to put them on now and then uh, for comfort. Um, all right.
that's all the deeper that side goes. Okay, so that's pretty good. A little bit past right there. Not too big a deal. So I need to keep in mind which way it's sloping. That is about as deep as that side goes. And then it continues down going this way. I'm down to the line everywhere, I believe, but I'm likely still bellied in the middle, which is kind of a safe way to go. So, although that's weird to not have that touching, that's just what I got to go with in this instance. Um, I could probably search for another piece that doesn't have such a twist or redistribute it or something, but I'm really not worried about how that's picking up. And I really want it to be nice and plumb as I see it exit that post. Because that's actually going to be a feature from underneath. Is looking at those hip rafters exposed underneath. So for this one, I'm just removing the bulk of the material with a Forstner bit. And then I'll go and clean it up with the chisel. I like to start where I can see the line. Stop just short of it. And I'm just going to go and score the score the line before I start taking anything out. side needs to be more straight up and down. Oh, 
that's a, that's a tough place for it not to end up. All right, that's a good time to check the depth on that corner. Okay. <laughs> that's not really fair. I'm sorry. But uh, there it is. Inch and a half. First try. First try, dude. <laughs> and then I can see I still have a... A little lump there. I'm not, I'm not really that close to done because I have to take material out of all of this. None of that is down to the line, but it's good to establish the unknown part. So I'm looking at, I'm still, I'm rocking on a little bit right there in the middle. And I'm trying to use the end of the ruler as a gauge to see if I'm square there. The, the shape of this face is sort of little bit of, uh, of guesswork until you have this line established and then you can gauge that face off of that line you know they're supposed to be square to each other high over here still anyway Ugh. that knot is terrible So I'm digging down to the line on the perimeter, making sure that they're reasonably straight lines. And I know I have a hump in the middle, but then I address that until it's gone. That's better. It's a little funky, but pretty good. Okay. funky but a lot of it's sitting down and this seems just fine yep we're touching down yep it's sitting right down with the other ones yeah well, you just saw me uh, muddle my way through a hip rafter. Thanks for watching. I want to make it look like I fall. <laughs> no. I'm Thanks gonna... for watching. <laughs> to be continued.